suicides, and that's the one that's not talked about. It, it has such large ramifications. But he is just doing such terrific work. Um, you know, and it's very personal to me in that in my middle school, where I've been teaching now for 12 years, there is a tree that commemorates a student who was shot by her father, who then shot himself. Um, this issue doesn't get talked about. It doesn't get talked about enough. But we have a congressman who is courageous enough to bring these issues to light, uh, and to be a real national leader on this, and then help and elect Democrats all over the country. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Congressman Don Byer. Uh, good evening. Uh, I, uh, God, it's wonderful to be here. Um, not, I don't know, has anyone else here campaign statewide before? Not yet. Many of you will later on. Uh, but you can fit most of the 5th, 6th, 7th of the districts in a room like this. <laughs> so it is so wonderful to see the health and the energy and the wonderful attitude that you have towards politics. Which is why we're going to elect Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine president of the First, you know that Susie Warner, who led Jim Moran's constituent service office for 24 years, and then mine for 18 months, uh, finally retired to spend a little time with her grandchildren. And we looked far and wide and couldn't find anybody, so then we hired Noah Sun. Great Marilyn Tony with real school board experience. Last year, that little office handled a thousand constituent concern problems. Most of them successful. Um, so thank Noah, thank you for coming on board and, and giving us that leadership. And I would like to ask my, offer my personal deep thanks to Josh Catcher. Um, 13,392 votes, 13,392 new voters. Let me remind you that we elected George Allen that the people in Charlottesville to the House of Delegates by five votes. Uh, we failed to elect Creedy's Attorney General over Bob McDonald by 331 votes. We only elected Mark Herring Attorney General by, it was originally 190 votes, ended up being about 600 votes after the recount. On and on and on, there, there, a handful of votes again and again makes an enormous difference in the kind of leadership policies and life that we have. 13,292 would change many, many elections in Virginia. Yeah, Mark yeah. Warner. Woo! I feel like I know the exact number, but when, when we left Mark Warner's suite in 2014, when he barely beat Gillespie, it was like 2,000 votes. I think it ended up being around 13,292. So this is a wonderful thing. <laughs> so Josh and everyone who's part of that effort, thank you, thank you, thank you. my chief of staff. She and I did meet with Maggie's crew, Maggie Seppi, the other night, two nights ago. Uh, it is so wonderful what the Democratic Party of Virginia and the Clinton campaign have done. They put 20 wonderful, mostly young people, there's one 55-year-old, but most of them are 22 to 26. Um, most of them blooded in a couple of campaigns. They've been to New Hampshire, Iowa, Alaska, Hawaii, uh, who are on the ground in just in Northern Virginia. Actually, it's 40. They divide the Northern Virginia into the northern half, which includes Arlington, and the southern half, which is like Prince William, and places like that. Um, it's 40 wonderful people out there really just trying to stimulate all the volunteers we can have. And uh, so please treat Maggie well and all the folks around her. We're very, very lucky to have them. Uh, I, I tried to build a statewide fuel organization in the 1997 governor's race of volunteers. It worked great in Northern Virginia. <laughs> but what a what a phenomenal convention we had. That was some of the best speeches I've ever heard in my life. Michelle Obama, Jim Kane, Gabby Gifford, Bill Clinton, Paul, Paul Simon's wonderful Bridge Over Troubled Water. I had, I had not discovered until I was reading that night that the original Bridge Over Troubled Water was sung by Art Carfone. Mm -hmm. And that there was bitterness all these years that Paul didn't get to sing these <laughs> Bernie Sanders wonderful asking for acclamation for the day, but it brought the house down. The, uh, the love comes eight times over here, that we are stronger together. You know, I've only been to four national conventions, but there was nothing like this. 
And I was very proud to see Margo everywhere. Uh, Adam Evan was working in the crowd four days in a row. And, uh, and the best part, though, was Alfonso, representing yeah. Arlington, who was the whip. Yeah. And uh, he threw more people out of our section than any of <laughs> <laughs> He did a really good job. Uh, and so when we see Alfonso, thank him for, for being the, uh, the bouncer at the convention. <laughs> Look, I only want to say one thing about Donald Trump, too. Um, everything, first of all, it's just amazing reading the paper. Everything that I've learned about life in my 66 years, from my parents, my teachers, my pastors, my friends, my books, my experience, my mentors, seems to be the opposite of who Donald Trump is. You know, we always look for our role models. Donald Trump is the epitome of the anti-role model. <laughs> we were taught to be humble, and he brands his name in huge letters on everything. We were taught to be honest, and he cheats everybody he deals with. We were taught to be kind, and Donald Trump ridicules those with disabilities, among others. We were taught to be generous, and despite his billions, he gives away virtually nothing, which we see very clearly if we release his tax returns. We were taught to be tolerant, and Donald Trump would ban Muslims, Mexicans, immigrants, and anybody else he could that would elicit a cheer from his crowd. We were taught to defend our friends and our families, and Donald Trump wants to abandon our NATO allies, and encourages others to develop nuclear weapons. We were taught to stand up to dictators and bullies, and Trump instead admires Putin and Kim Jong-un and Saddam Hussein. We were taught to honor those who fight and die to defend our freedom, and Donald Trump picks the stupid fight with the Khan family. And we were taught to love, and Donald Trump has filled the airwaves with hate. And as a politician, I was, you know, we were taught to shake hands and kiss babies, and he throws the babies <laughs> out of the <laughs> the golden rule, the, 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 the great law of the New Testament, is in every culture and religion, and again and again, we actually see it throughout the animal kingdom, this altruism, that we should treat others the way we wish to be treated. Love your neighbor as yourself. And despite that egomaniacal name in big gold letters, Donald Trump is the very opposite of the golden rule. He's an embarrassment to our nation, and we cannot, we must not, we will not let him win on the number eight. I used to have a big sign behind my desk at the dealership that just said ask, A-S-K, and letters this big. Um, I gave something like 84 high school and college graduation speeches when I was in the town They would always invite the governor. He would never come. They'd right. ask the <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I was always waiting for the one from UVA or William or anything like that. <laughs> and, uh, and so I would go in, and you realize the kids aren't paying much attention, right? They're playing with the beach balls. And, so I would keep the speech short, and I would try to focus on the handful of things that I learned that I think, thought could actually be helpful for them. You accept every invitation, take care of yourself, things like that. Um, but I forgot to tell them, one of the things I've realized over time is actually the most valuable, and that's to ask. Most of us are too shy, too reluctant, too afraid, just too hesitant to ask for what we really need. Um, for example, people won't ask for a raise. Um, people are, are too ass shy to ask somebody out on a date. I can't tell you how many times as a high school student I dialed the first six digits of the girls and I would have hung up um, because I was just too shy. They asked for promotion. For us hunter-gatherer men, to ask for directions. <laughs> yeah, most of us mostly make progress in our lives by requesting and receiving. For example, I ask for your vote. Please vote for me on November 8th. <laughs> Tip O'Neill, I think it was the first book that Chris Matthews wrote, who, and he was Tip O'Neill's press secretary. And he said in Tip's first election, he was running for city council in Cambridge or Somerville, and he won the little election, and he came up and told the, the, this elderly lady next door how happy he was he won, and he thanked her for his, her vote. She said, I didn't vote for you. Know? And he, she said, why not? And he said, well, you never asked me for your vote. So, please vote for me. Um, but beyond that, so I've been selling cars for 42 years. So we sell a new Volvo, Kia, Subaru, Volkswagen, Land Rover. We have to ask an average of seven times 
before a customer will say yes. Yeah. You can't just ask one time, they'll walk out the door and you never see them again. So we use trial closes. We say, Kip, do you want the red one or the blue one? Our blue one pick it up on Thursday or on Saturday. We entitle it your name or your wife's name or whatever. You know, we, we, we ask and ask and ask. This asking process is so important. It shows up in the Bible again and again. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. You know, I've been finance here of a lot of things. So I ran an Esther's campaign for Congress in 1982 with many of you here. Uh, and the FCDC, the Democratic Party of Virginia, Mark Warner's presidential campaign. I'm now the finance chair of the DCCC. You know, the, 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 the Obama campaign in the Middle Atlantic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I want to tell you, this is the truth, I hope and say this. I wasn't saying that to be like Donald Trump. Um, I am not a very good fundraiser. Um, there are many people in this room, including my pal Adam Evan, who are thinking, well, I'm much better fundraisers than I am. The only reason I kept getting this job is I make the calls. As many of you know. <laughs> again and again and again and again and again. And if you ask people, an amazing number of people come through. As a fundraiser, I've long gotten past the pain of rejection. You know, that, that notion that you have to embrace the ocean of rejection. Um, but because my job is to invite people to give, to, to be important, to be relevant, to be part of the process. I can't control whether somebody just inherited ten million dollars from their uncle or is worried about this Saturday's grocery bill. I have no idea. The job is to invite people to come. And those who can will, those who can't, they got really good reason for doing it. So I never, ever get angry or, or ever try to make anybody feel bad about it or, or ashamed about it. Um, my job is just to invite people to be part of these campaigns. The, the core wisdom for me is that the world works by invitation. And our job is to invite people to be part of the world in a big way. You know, there's a famous downstate political story. In 1975, Mills Goddard was the newly elected Democratic governor. You may remember he was the one who instituted the sales tax for the first time, which funded our wonderful community college system. That was when he was a governor. And his lieutenant governor was a Richmond lawyer named Fred Pollard. Um, Hunter Andrews then, out of Hampton Roads, was one of the most powerful members of the Virginia Senate. He was majority leader, he was finance chair, he was, you know, for rock solid leader. And uh, he was in a terrible mood for a couple of years. And after some disgruntlement, he confessed to Governor Godwin that he was very hurt that he hadn't been invited to be the lieutenant governor on his ticket. And Governor Godwin said, Hunter, I had no idea. I put you on the ticket in I had no idea that you wanted. The failure to ask cost the people. <coughs> Religion again. The Lord's Prayer has four separate, clearly identical asks in its text. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. So at the heart of Christianity and the heart of probably every other major religion in the world, is this imperative of petitioning for what we need. Now, I'm sure you guys are really wondering where I'm going with all this. <laughs> Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine versus Donald Trump and Mike Pence. You and I are going to have no say over the TV assaults. We are going to watch the debates, nervous and, and powerless to affect their outcomes. And we certainly can't control the smarter, the dumb things that our candidates will say. And we can't impact how events are going to play out on the worldwide stage. Remember? 2014, the last two weeks before that wave election where we lost a lot of good Democrats, Mark Warner almost lost. It was all ISIS beheadings and Ebola deaths. That was the news, the scares all the death. But the one thing we can do is ask. Uh, I'm sure Kip has the target number for Arlington compared to 2012, 2008. My guess is it's 20% higher. 50,000 votes is what we're going to win Arlington by. up here or her boss Kevin on the Hillary Clinton, the DPBA campaign, they'll tell you that the model they built to win in 2016 for, for Hillary and for Tim is heavily weighted towards Northern Virginia. You know, Democratic presidential candidates have, haven't won the white college educated vote in 40 years. And yet Hillary and Tim are doing really, really well with that vote. And they tend to live here. We also, they, we do really well with new Americans who overwhelmingly live here in Northern Virginia. So they can be much more dependent. Remember, Terry only won in Northern Virginia, Mark only won in Northern Virginia, Tim in 2012 won in Northern Virginia. It's ever, ever more important. So my ask 
is that you ask. And that this means we've got to knock on the door of every single eligible voter, including and especially presumed Republican voters. Um, if ever there was a year to take a rock group of Republicans living in Madison Precinct uh, and get him or her to switch your vote, it's right now. You know, in, in the year of Trump. You've got to ask everyone we meet at the door or the phone to vote for Hillary. We have to ask them to commit to showing up. We have to ask them to volunteer. Farmers markets, metro stations, all these wonderful voter registration opportunities we have, phone calls, meetups, driving people to the polls. Anything we can do to ask is going to change the course of this country. Ask and we shall receive. The most prepared person in the history to be president, the first Virginian on a presidential ticket in 100 years, and the first vice president for Virginia in 176 years. Please ask.